But hey, my, my message today is entitled The Shepherd's Care. And uh, it's coming out of the book of Psalms, and I wanted to read Psalms 23. It's one of my favorite books in the Bible, especially that of the Old Testament. And I'm particularly favorite to the writings of King David. And this is one of, one of the uh, Psalms that were penned. And it reads as follows. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want to make me to lie down in green pastures and lead me beside the still waters. He restored my soul and lead me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff that comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Today I told you my message is entitled, A Shepherd's Care. The title shepherd takes on a number of meanings along with some serious duties. A shepherd in the general sense of the word is someone who overlooks the care of sheep. This psalm has two major extended metaphors. The first is an analogy between the Lord as a shepherd and uh, his relationship as, as a, his relationship with sheep. The big point of this metaphor is that the Lord looks after and nurtures his flock, and the speaker of this message is part of that flock, King David. So I would like to talk about a shepherd's care. Here in Psalms, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I'm going to read this again. He make me, I should not want, he make me lie down in green pastures. Before, when I presented this psalm to you, I presented it with a focus on the sheep. I told you that sheep are led by a shepherd. Unlike cattle, their cattle are driven from the rear, the sheep are led from the front. And I told you that when it was referring to lying down in green pastures, that four things have to occur for a sheep to lay down. It can't be hungry, it can't be commotion within the fold, it cannot be pestilence, and it cannot be a predator in the vicinity. Otherwise, there'd be trouble and they won't lay down. I also told you that a sheep would not drink by rough waters for fear of drowning. But today, I'm going to take this psalm and give you a relationship not just as a shepherd with a sheep, but as the Lord to a person. And you being that person. Here in, in this Psalm 23, uh, it says that, I'm going to explain each one of these verses. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. And that's referring to the Lord as being the overseer, the protector, the provider, the one who oversees the life of the sheep. And that equals a relationship. If the Lord is your shepherd, you're saying you have a relationship with the Lord. When you say Lord, you're saying, he is the head of your life. How I many of you can testify that the Lord is the head of your life? Amen. It's not just a title. And this, this next verse is the key verse throughout this passage. It says, and I shall not want. And today when Dr. Robert Ferguson read this, he says, I shall lack none. Nothing. I'm not going to be without. And the reason being is because the Lord provides for those that belong to him. Amen. 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 It said, he leading me in the path, he leading me beside the still waters. I told you that sheep were trouble if waters were rough and they would drink. But this is talking about people. And to have still waters is, is a reflection is of refreshment, of a peace, something that is peaceful, and it represents tranquility. So when you hear that, he leads me by beside the still water. It's a representation of tranquility. 
When he says, he restored my soul, the next verse is referring to healing or someone being restored back to a duty. Because as you know, many of you that in your walk in Christ, some of us run off our posts or our assignments. He restores us back. We come back to the fold and back to the fellowship. This verse right here is not talking about salvation. It's talking about coming back to where you're supposed to be. Amen? Amen. Then he says, he lead me in the path of righteousness. And even though the word for the, his namesake is along with that, I separate this for a purpose. And one of the purposes is this, is that when he leadeth me, he is your guide. Look at your neighbor say, he is my guide. He is my guide. When it say for his namesake, that equals purpose. Because of his namesake means he lead you for his purpose. This is what you do for him. That's why you represent Christ. Where he takes you is for his glory. You are made for his glory, for his purpose. And he gives you the power to do so. And when it goes on to say, Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, that's your testing, your trials. And it goes on to say, I will fear no evil. That's saying that you trust God to protect you. How many of you know God to be your refuge, your strong tower, your fortress, your buckler, your shield? Yes. We hide underneath the shadows of the Almighty. Yes, He is protection. And He said, For thou art with me. That equals the faithfulness of God. God will never leave you nor forsake you. So when the psalmist says, Thou art with me, He know God to be faithful. How many you know God to be faithful? Yes. Amen. Goes on to say, Thy rod and thy staff, they come for me. A rod is a means of protection. And a staff is a means to guide. So when we put those two together, we come up with a defense and a discipline. Hello? The rod be used to defend the sheep from the enemy. And the staff... He would slightly tap the sheep if they were going astray or doing something they weren't supposed to to tap them and keep them in line. Some of you have been tapped before, so don't act like that. I've been, some of you might still be getting tapped right now. You know, so. <laughs> I know he didn't tap me. <laughs> and it never ceased. I might, I might have a, a, a longer cycle between taps, but every so often he taps me. How many of you testify the Lord is still tapping you? If the Lord is still tapping you because he's not through with you, and those of you who are raising your hand, you were just too tired to do so, or you're lying. I would just like to think that you were just too tired to do so. Amen? Because God is not through us yet. Now, this one here is a special set. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemy. You know what that equals? Hope. That's what that represents. Hope, because you don't know what's going to happen, but you trust God yes. so well. Uh, you can prepare a table in the, in the presence of my enemies, and I'm not worried about what they're going to do with me. Yes. Most people, if they're not comfortable, they're surely not going to be sitting at the table. But if the Lord prepares the table, it should be well with your soul. Yes. And so your hope is in Him. And so in saying that, you know He got you. Yes. Next thing I want to touch on, I said He anoints my hair with oil. <clears throat> the oil is a representation of the Holy Spirit. It consecrates you. It sets you apart for the special work of the Lord. So when you are anointed, and we are anointed by the Holy Spirit, it's for the glory of the Lord. Amen. We are set apart. We are holy. We are a chosen people, a, a peculiar generation, a royal priesthood. We weird to the world. But unto the Lord, we are his sons and daughters. He anoints us. He equips us to do his will. He sets us apart for his service, for his work. Unto him be the glory. Yes. Next one says this. My cup runneth over. That it's two views. One of the views is that the King James did translate this into the proper words and it says that word should be refreshing but the other view and this is the one I'm jumping on is the abundance yes. 
When my cup runneth over, that means he's a God of more than enough. I told you as believers, there's three walks that you in, three phases of your life as a believer. You either in the land of not enough, just enough, or more than enough. There's no in-betweens. Look at your neighbor. Not enough, not enough. Just, enough, just enough, or more than enough. Than enough. <laughs> Next verse, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I don't know if you, I need to tell you this, but that's, that equals blessings. Yes. If goodness and mercy, and he is goodness, and he is mercy, and he shall follow everywhere I go, he goes with me. Yes. Isn't that a good thing to know? Yes. So everywhere I go, when I show up, blessings show up. Why? Because I'm blessed. Yes. How many of y'all feel like you're blessed? Yes. Let me show you how blessed you are. If you're a believer, and let's make sure you're believers. I don't want you running on this and you're not a believer. I don't want you thinking you have this and you don't. When you're a believer, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You can look in the book of Ephesians 1 and 13. It speaks about the Holy Spirit of promise and being baptized into the body of Christ as we found in 1 Corinthians 12. But as you are baptized into the body of Christ, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And Ephesians 4 and 30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. So what that means is, once you belong to him and he put this seal on you, everywhere you go, that spirit goes with you. Hello? And there's no way you can have a Holy Spirit that somebody can write your value down. God loved me enough to give his son, who knew no sin, for my life. That means I'm worth something. Yes. Hello? And the evidence that I'm worth something is that his spirit lives inside of me. Yes. And everywhere I go, that worth goes with me. So wherever you go, look at your neighbor and say, the value goes up. The value goes up. Hello? When you press your way out this morning, maybe it didn't seem like much to you, but when you press your way to this fellowship, you added value to this fellowship because you brought the Spirit of the Lord with you and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is value. So look at that and say, God is not through with me yet. I may look a little rough around the edges, but I have great value. Yes, yes, yes. It goes on to say this in verse it's the next verse. It says, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. That's security. When you dwell in the house of the Lord, it's security. The next part of that is forever. That's eternity. Dwelling in the house of the Lord is security. When they add forever, it's eternity. You know what the shepherd is saying? The Lord has you in every category. If you're hungry, he'll feed you. If you thirsty, he'll give you water. If you sick, he'll heal you. If he weary, he'll give you rest. And if you are in trouble, he'll give you peace. And if you need a king to show up to fight against the enemy, he will show up. What he's saying is he has your back. He's not lacking. He's all-knowing. He's all power. And he cares for you. And he will provide for you as long as you are his. And you know what he says in, in, the, in the Gospel of John chapter 10? He says, I give unto them eternal life and they should never perish. Neither should any man pluck them out of my hand. You can have a bad day, but you can't have a lost day. You can have an off day, but not a lost day. You can stumble to the right and you can stumble to the left. But I told you, you're like a yo-yo. God will let you go out so far on your own. Because you know sometimes we want to run off and do our own thing. But then you snap your heart right back to him. And you will come back to him. Sometimes we have to come back broken and limping and, and suffering. But we're going to come back to him. And guess what? This work that he forgot in us, he is responsible for taking care of it. You can't take care of yourself, and the evidence is you haven't done it in the past. Do I need to go any further? I want to be, I want to be like 
You ain't been very good at taking care of yourself. That's why the sheep has to have a shepherd. Sheep not, not very good at defending themselves. Matter of fact, a sheep don't even know how to find food. They've been domesticated so long that they have to be led to a place to eat. And sheep are followers. If one sheep jump off a cliff, the lead sheep, the other sheep will follow suit. And you know what? For the most part, people are the same way. They don't just jump right off the cliff. They jump into stuff that, that can kill them because they see somebody else do it. I remember somebody would say, well, uh, such and that's doing it, and they don't say nothing to her, and the other person is doing it, and they're not saying, hey, you know what? The ways of a man seems all right, but they lead to death. Don't trust yourself. Lead not to your own understanding. Trust the shepherd. The good shepherd laid his life down for you. I want you to turn your Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter 10. Lord is our defense. Yes, he is the forgiver of sin and the giver of eternal life. He is our hope and our refuge. Yes, he provides for us according to his riches and glory. You don't have a problem too big that God can't fix. You don't have enough money where he can't pay it. You ain't sick enough where he can't raise you even if it's from the dead. He's able. Yes. And I'm going to be bold like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They say, I got will. And even if he don't fix my little problem, I am not. I'm going to praise his name just the same. How many of you know how to praise the Lord even when it's a storm out? Some of y'all real good when the choir is singing. But sometimes the choir ain't singing. Sometimes you had a bad day at the job, the key is not acting right. You might come home and, and something's wrong in the house. Can you praise the Lord when things are not right? Oh, bless his name. Hear the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse number 10. The Lord telling us what he came here to do. You need to know you're included in this so you can conform to his desires for your life because there's nothing you can do better than what he can do for you. You don't have a better plan. Look at your neighbor and say, your plan ain't that good. Look at your neighbor and say, matter of fact, your plan is no good. Let's keep it real. Let's, let's, let's go here and care cover this. He said this. The Lord says, the thief coming not but to steal, kill, and to destroy that's three things I want you to recognize when you're out and about, you're going this place and that place. When you see those signs going forth, you know that that's the work of the enemy because that's what he does. He paints a picture for you. Steal, kill, destroy. When you see that going on, you know that's him having his way. Amen? Goes on to say this. He says he's coming to kill, steal, and destroy. He says... He said, but I come that you may have life. Not just some life, but an abundant life. Abundant is more than enough. When they say you got an abundant supply, you got more than what you need. Your God is a God of more than enough. Yes, yes. He don't run out. He don't go to sleep. He, he don't become weary. He don't need rest. He don't have to go get prescription filled. And he don't wear glasses. Hello? If you get to heaven and your God wearing glasses, you at the wrong heaven. <laughs> Hello? Our God is able, and you know what I like about him? His ears is open to our cries. We cry out to the Lord in our troubles. I, I read verse, verse after verse in the Bible where it said they cried out to the Lord in their troubles and he delivered them. They cried out with their sickness and disease. And he healed all of their sickness and all of their diseases. It wasn't something they brought before the Lord he couldn't fix. He made the wind and the sea obey him. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. In the midst of a storm, he can say, peace be still. Yeah. And even the wind and the sea obey him. If you got God on your side, if God be for you, who can be against you? 
Hello? Weeping may endure for a night, but what? Listen. You might have had a bad night, but it's, it's, it's the new day. It's the morning. The Lord has showed up. And guess what? He is for us. I told you. Watch how you talk about me. God is for us. Watch how you treat me. He don't like it when people treat me bad. He don't like it when people talk about me. He don't like it when we don't do what he called us to do. Hello? So I want you to know you don't need a backup plan. I want everybody to have a PhD in this. I want you to be past having doubt that God is forever faithful. He's not slacking his promises concerning you. He is for you. And if God be for you, no weapon formed against you. Where I am, you may be in my father's house. If it was not so, I go to prepare a place. Yes, yes, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I am the resurrection. Yes, he says, behold, I make all things new. I know you might be weary, but he said, you are weary, come unto me and, and, and to my rest. He said, you will find rest for your soul. Why? Because my yoke is easy and my burdens is light. Come unto me if you're heavy laden. Bring your problems. Cast your care upon me because I care for you. Yes, come on to me. Yes, yes. I'll take your sin. I'll take your death and give you life. Oh, what an exchange. You took my troubles. You took my suffering. You took my sin and gave me life. You wiped me clean as snow. I'm not a gangster no more. And people are not dope fiends no more. They're not drug addicts no more. They're not liars and cheaters no more. Why? Because you said, if any man be in me, he's a new creature. Old man's past life. All things are me. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. All things are new. I come to destroy the works of the devil. Come to do the Father's will. Let me read to you in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, the will of the Father. Some of you may be confused about this. I'm not confused about this at all. If you turn your Bibles with me to the Gospel of John, chapter 6. God is a redeemer. Hello? If y'all knew what I used to be and what I used to do, and y'all see that I'm in this place now, some of y'all might be wanting to dance just a little. I remember one of my boys told me, he said, keep on the Lord can say you, he can say anybody. That's what he told me. Here in the Gospel of John, chapter 6, I want you to begin in verse 37. This is a very special love affair. It says this, All that the Father give me shall come to me, and him that come to me I will no wise cast out. This is Christ speaking. Going down to verse 44, it says, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. God the Father draws you out. Christ receives you and the Holy Spirit seals you. Go back to verse number 38. It's very important when you study in the Bible to find what the purpose of what you read and what is it for. What, what is the meaning of it? Right here, Christ tells you what his purpose was. He says, For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which has sent me, that all which he have given me I shall lose nothing, but shall raise it up again at the last day. The Father's will, all that he gave me, I'm losing none. You can't slick them away from me. They can't leave even if they want to. And you know this, who would be foolish enough to really be saved and try to be unsaved? Who, who that stupid? Who, who would be foolish enough to want to give up salvation to go to hell? You cannot knowingly know the truth and want to walk away from it. 
The truth will set you free. And the Bible says not just free, but free indeed. I told you some things that God has delivered you from, you will never taste them again. And that's the evidence that he is God. You may say, I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to drink again. I'm not going to gamble again. I'm not going to cheat again. And you know you've been lying. Hello? How many of you ever said you weren't going to do something again did? Yeah. Somebody even said all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that from the congregation. They said all the time. I'm still struggling. God's not through with us yet. Let it be well with your soul. The shepherd said there's no lack with this God. If you got some God other than this God, this is the only true God, you lack it. Let me give you some evidence here. But listen to this. I told you the key sentence here is, I shall not want. Why is there no want? Because the Lord is his shepherd. The Bible says, in him dwell the fullness of the God he had bodily, and you are complete in him. He's fully God. And he can do what a full God can do. He's 100% God, and he's able to do 100% things that God can do. Let me talk just for a moment to tell you some things that God can do you can't do. God knows everything. There's no secrets. He can't learn anything. You can still learn. Look at your name and say, you still can learn some things. Yeah. Say it in a nice kind of way because, you know, we're going to fellowship after service. Yeah. So say it nice. God has the power to forgive sin. That's the attribute only he has. It's not communable. He can't transfer it to someone else. God is the only being that has the power to forgive sin. You can forgive someone who sinned against you, but you can't wipe away his sin. That's an attribute that only God has. Also, God is the only one that has the ability to give eternal life. It's not enough just to have your sins removed. You still need to be saved. You know, some stories in the Bible about the Lord casting demons out of people, and some people seem to t t take that and think that, well, since he cast the demon out of him, he saved. No, that just means he cast the demon out. Amen. You still have to receive the Lord as your Savior, or some other ones can come back. Hello? Amen. Luke's name is, I hope you ain't rolling like that. Because the only way a demon can come inside of you is if you ain't saved. Hello? Same people can't have demons. Look and say that again because some people look like they didn't know that. <laughs> say this again. Same people can't have demons. They can't be possessed by a demon. Why? Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Hello? <laughs> Let me close with this. I told you I won't be long before you. This is about quitting time. It says this. <laughs> Who is your shepherd is the question. Because I, I spoke about a shepherd's care, but some people may have a wrong shepherd. I hear somebody tell me that a uh, person they know believe in Christ. They go, is, is it the Christ of the Bible? Because I run across a lot of groups that we believe in Jesus. You believe in Jesus, God in the flesh? They go, no. I said, we don't believe in Jesus. They said, why are you so dogmatic? It's what the Bible teaches me. You got a problem with taking up with the Lord. He put these words in print. He inspired these men to write this what is written. You got to go by that. We're dogmatic about that. There's no other name under heaven whereby you can be saved. It's at the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. It's not an option. It's only one Savior. His name is Jesus. Okay. So, who is your shepherd? Is it Jesus of the Bible? Your shepherd, or is it some other? Y'all should have been all standing up to Jesus of the Bible. Y'all still, I don't know if y'all hungry, or you just had a big night last night or something. But y'all should have been excited to say, it's the Jesus of the Bible. Mary's baby, born of a virgin of the tribe of Judah. Hello? Born in Bethlehem. Are your needs being met? Some of you cry when you got money, cry when you low money, cry, just cry all the time. 
How many of you know some people, they cry when they got something, they cry when they don't have something? You know what that's saying? I'm not satisfied with you, Lord. I'm not pleased with your performance. That's what it's saying. You don't know that sometimes, but you didn't know to the day. Let's give you that. When you complain all the time, you tell them the Lord, I'm not pleased with your performance with me. Look at your neighbor and say, watch what you say. Because it can. Come on. I learned this when I was a criminal. What you say can and will be used against you. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Who said that? Who said that? <laughs> okay, now listen to this. Are your needs been met? Are you fearless? You know, he said, Yea, go and walk through the valleys of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. That's the part where we're going to separate from company here. Some of you real good, but you've been fearful. You know what fear comes from? Not trusting in the Lord. And you know what the Bible says in Revelation, I believe it's 21 and 8, that the cowardly or the fearful, they can't get in. Why? Because you didn't trust me. You better trust the Lord because he's bigger than your problems. He's bigger than your circumstances. Ask the Lord to give you eyes not just to see to your problems, but to see through your problems. Ask the Lord, give me eyes to see. Because if this is the God that we serve, this almighty God, what do you have to be afraid of? Amen. No one can pluck you out of his hands. He's able to deliver you from all circumstances and situations. He's able to give you peace in a troubled world. He's able to heal the sick, raise the dead, restore sight to the blind. The deaf can hear and the dumb can speak. He can make the wind and the sea obey his name. He caused the sun to rise in the east and set in the west. He makes the seasons change. He puts it in the animals to know when to mate. Yes, he causes the grass to grow. Yes, he's a mighty God. He made the stars be suspended in the sky. The sun, if we were any closer, we would burn up because it would be too hot. If we were any further away, we would freeze because of cold. You got a God that's A1 at point all the time. All of his ways are faithful and just. All of his ways are true. He is holy. He is the most high God. He got your back. He's for you. He wrote your name down in a Lamb's Book of Life. He is merciful. He is kind. He is caring. He is loving. He is compassionate. And his ears is open unto you. Oh, bless the name of God. The ship of care is everlasting. It's not a temporary circumstance. Chance is, is not something that goes on only if you do good. The shepherd cares everlasting. So on to you. I see a lot of people raise their hand like they were saying. But I know how strong that is. I've been around the block a few times. <laughs> if you don't know Jesus, I'm not just talking about a man person. I pray that the Lord would draw you on today to salvation. I pray that you would save your soul from every other sins. Put a purpose in you. That you may glorify him. Is there any in the midst of this fellowship on today that need to be saved from their sins? They need to be forgiven.